Hey everybody, Noble Records coming at you with another video. It's been a crazy, as usual, few weeks. Uh, everybody over here in our house has been kind of sick a little bit, so I've been just uh, trying to get as much work done as I can. Um, but I've got some things that I was able to find and thought I would show them to you guys, let you see. Uh, this, these Vinyl Finds videos are just kind of, not necessarily things I find in collections, but some of the records that I've really zeroed in on and tried to find individually uh, and had some success with. So, first thing that I'm going to show you is actually not a record, which never happens. This is called The Endless Trip by um, Richard Morton Jack. Uh, just incredible, uh, huge reference book. For every psych album you could imagine that's US or Canadian. So um it does over three hundred or three thousand album reviews in this book. Just detailed reviews, pictures, uh just incredible. These books are impossible to find. They were very limited, released very on a limited basis. Um you can't find them, they're not in production anymore. I've been looking for a copy for years, literally. And, uh, since, I mean, I want to say like 2013 or so, I've been looking for a copy of this and just have not been able to find it. It's just one of those things, just impossible. And so I was able to find one, popped up on eBay and I had to pull the trigger on it. So anyways, very, very, very excited about that. Just any psych record you can imagine. If you're wondering like what it's like and you haven't heard it, you can just read all these reviews and stuff on every, I mean, 3,000 records. It's crazy. Anyways, um, I, I showed you this in my last video. This is uh, Towns Van Zandt, for the sake of the song, is original on Poppy. Um, Towns Van Zandt stuff on Poppy is so impossible to, for me to find. Um, I've been looking for stuff on Poppy for a long time. His original first pressings and stuff. Um, it's just crazy. <laughs> hard to find and I found this one was just totally stoked about it it's kind of beat up it's got some you know tape on the edge but uh, the vinyl plays great it's original US pressing so I was like man that's awesome I finally found an original towns uh, then uh, sometime last week a good friend of mine that lives in Texas reached out to me he said hey man I found some towns van Zet. do you want them I'm like heck yeah so uh, we struck a deal on him, and he sent me this first pressing of the late Great Towns Van Sant on Poppy. Um, just, I can't, I can't even believe I have this. This, and I, I hate to say it, but any original Towns record is a grail to me, because they are so hard to find. And Towns Van Zandt is just one of those artists, I know I talk about him all the time, but um, I just saw this documentary, or I'm about halfway through it, about Towns Van Zandt. It's called uh, Be Here to Love Me. I think that's what it's called. Um, anyways, it's a great documentary, but it, it goes really in depth on how limited he released these records. Um, I said I think that they said there's only like seven thousand uh, releases on Poppy that he he put out. So that's crazy, crazy limited. And he shared a really funny story. Uh, Towns did in the documentary. Somebody had interviewed him about this record, and he said that he had just gotten into town and took that really he called it a sober looking picture on the front and then um on the back is this picture of towns and what he described was going on in this picture was that he had gotten a new saddle and he put it on the back of a couch and he was riding it like a bull and i think he was probably impaired a little bit um and he had his shirt ripped off and thrown over his shoulder and all this stuff and he said that um every time he would put out a record he'd call his mom and say hey mom uh, run out and buy my record and she'd go to a record store or somewhere and find one and run out and buy it and she, she, just, she said that she went out and went to go buy this record and she went up to the record store owner and, or the clerk or whatever and said that's my son uh, Towns on the front but who's that on the back and the guy's like well, that's Towns on the back and she said that's not my son Towns that's not him who, who is it and uh, he, she argued with him until he was like I don't know who it is you <laughs> know I guess just because he was acting so wild and crazy, she wasn't used to that. Uh, it was a pretty funny story. But that, um, 
that documentary is incredible. Uh, it's called Be Here to Love Me, and uh, it's really good. I haven't finished it yet, but it's incredible. Um, anyways, he also sent me this, Towns Van Zandt, self-titled on Tomatoes. This is not a first pressing. It's a 1978 reissue, which this is as good as I'm going to get uh, for now. Uh, the first pressings of this are worth like 300 bucks. I don't know. It's crazy. But this is my favorite Towns Van Zandt record. Um, if you're going to get into Towns Van Zandt, and you haven't listened to him, this was this is the one to, to pick. This is his self-titled, 1969, uh, just phenomenal record. It's mostly acoustic, uh, which is the way I like it. Um, but I was thrilled to find this one. It's in great shape. Um, he sent me that one, too. So, man, my town's stuff is, is coming together. I really want all the original presses. Most records like that I don't care about, but Towns Van Zandt's one of those artists that I like so much. I just, I gotta have them all. I just have to. Uh, anyways, um, also, I don't know, I talked to you guys a little bit about the Uninvited Mole. Uh, Uninvited Mole is a Pink Floyd bootleg record label that they are, they now went out of business, they're gone, but I was surprised to see some people, um, that were involved in the making of that bootleg label came out with a new label called Top Hat Records, uh, and this is a new release. They 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 have two releases that they they let out, and um, there's only a hundred, I think, a hundred copies of each. This is number fifty. Um, this is multicolor vinyl. This is called the Screaming the Screaming Scotchman, and this is. Um, Hanover, West Germany, November 27th, 1970. And um, I'll show you the color vinyl on this is beautiful. Um, look at that. That's disc one. Um, I don't really have to take it out. That's disc two. And then this one I might need to take out just so you can get the full effect. It's disc number three. But man, it's beautiful. Uh, beautiful colored vinyl on those. And I have listened to it, and it sounds amazing. I love collecting these. They're really cool. Um, and then it's got a poster inside. Um, but I actually ordered two copies, so I might end up selling the other one. That's the poster on the inside. Um, but just really top notch, you know, unabited mole level. Uh, goodness on these releases they're just incredible and beautiful um, so those are that's the Hanover Germany 1970 and this one is the, the other one they released it's um, I didn't even open this one yet this is Japan um, do y'all hate these where they seal the ones that seal Gosh, I hate them. Maybe I'm just a grumpy old curmudgeon, but uh, anyways, this is live in Japan. I'll show you the cover before I show you the vinyl. Um, I haven't even opened this yet, so this is new to me. Um, there's a poster that comes with it. Real nice poster. Beautiful. And then there's, um, I guess this is a copy of the Japanese program. Wow. All these full color pictures of the program uh, from when they toured Japan and um, it's 1972 they, they stamp everything so this is um, on stage in Japan March 6 1972 in Tokyo Rip, man that's so cool um, only a hundred uh, only a hundred copies pressed and this is also number 50, so I guess they correlated that pretty good. That's all that's in there. Man, that is neat. Um, and then, this is the vinyl. So I think what they were trying to do um, is do like, make the vinyl look like the Japanese flag with the red dot in the middle. Um, and some of it has more red. This, this one has more red than the rest of them do. But uh, it's white with red all throughout. This one's more centralized in the middle. Uh, where's the opening on this rascal? So, that's pretty cool. Um, so, 
I can't wait to listen to that one. I haven't listened to that one yet. So also, um, I told you guys about last week, I had a video, or maybe a couple weeks ago, about this psych band called Fear Itself. There it is. Fear Itself, great female vocal uh, led psychedelic group and a great album by Fear Itself. And I was talking about how the lady who is the lead singer, Ellen McElwain, uh, was just a great, phenomenal vocalist. Um, and I was talking about that. And somebody that was watching my video, uh, his name's Ernest, he kind of messaged me on Facebook sometimes when we talk a little bit. Uh, we like a lot of the same type of music. And he's like, I have her solo record. The real Ellen McElwain. She, he said, I haven't listened to it in a long time. You can just have it. So he sent it to me as VCLT. And man, it is cool. Um, so I think this is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, she painted as well. So this is a painting. I don't know if this is, it looks like Janis Joplin. But I know that's a painting of Jimi Hendrix. Uh, but just judging by the cover, I was not expecting much because, let's face it, she does not look that cool on the cover. Uh, I thought it might be like a, hey, I don't know. Uh, but it is dang good. Uh, this is really good. And I don't know if it's as good as it's Fear Itself, but uh, there's a lot of Cajun sounds, a lot of blues sounds. Really good record. I was very surprised how good this one was. Um, she covered a couple songs, I think. Oh, yeah, she covered Higher Ground on Stevie Wonder. That was great. That starts off the record. Um, but yeah, this is this is really cool. If you can find it, it's not worth a whole lot. Like a $15 record or something like that. But man, I was very surprised how good that was. Um, also, uh, here's a couple more. I got these at some point from Chris, Tunes from the Man Cave. Uh, we and are swapping and trading. I don't think I've shown them yet. This is Throwing Copper Live. Uh, this is just a classic grunge record. I, I, had, I didn't have it, so... This is a music on vinyl reissue. Great. Um, this one is crazy. And I don't think I've showed it. But if I have, I'm willing to show it again. This is uh, Karen Dalton. It's so hard to tell uh, who's going to love you the best is the name of the album. Uh, this, I'll say Karen Dalton. This is a radio station copy. It's a promo. It says w WRNA on the front. Karen Dalton's a folk musician. Um, you know, if you like uh, Judy Sill, uh, Joni Mitchell type stuff, Karen Dalton, she's a multi-instrumentalist, incredible musician. Um, so this record, uh, I had kind of, I'd seen it a couple places, like in some rare, uh, some, some people have posted some rare, rare records here or there that I follow on Instagram, and I'd seen it, but I'd never heard it. And man, uh, Chris, this from the man cave, had, had it for sale, somebody had given it to him. He, he wasn't connected to it. He liked the sound of it, but whatever. And so uh, he gave me a really good deal on it. These go for like crazy money, like $150, $200. Uh, but I think he, I think they reissued it. I'm not sure. But it's on like Apple Music and Spotify and all that stuff. Uh, but really, th listen listen to this record. It's, it's ahead of its time. It's amazing. I'd almost call her the female Nick Drake. I don't know. It's, it's good. It's real good. Very, very good. So I'm really thrilled to have that. I've been spinning that a lot. Um, this is Led Zeppelin. Feel All Right Live in Monterey, 1971. Uh, just a cool cover. Great show. I didn't have it. It's one that I had, had seen over the years. Kind of wanted it. So glad to have that. It's on black vinyl. Nothing, nothing too special. Uh, I, got, I got a really good deal on this. Um, it's a Velvet Underground Nico. I have an unpeeled one, really nice, but it's a stereo third state. This is a mono second state, so it's got the sticker. So under that sticker is a torso cover. Um, super clean, mono pressing of it. And I was going to keep this, but I have a friend in the UK who is wanting to trade me some really rare psych records. And so that one might get tossed over across the pond. Um, got these. Really excited about this original master recording of uh, The Court of the Crimson King. Just, I've always wanted this one. And I found one at a really good price. So I had a Japanese pressing. I sold it. Bought this one. 
and man, this thing sounds incredible. Uh, the original master recordings, they always sound great. This one's no exception. It sounds incredible. Um, I was thrilled to have that. Those are really hard to find and expensive when you do. Same seller sold me this one. Sticky fingers. Y'all know it. Y'all love it. You know. Um, also got this one. A Blonde on Blonde. Contrast. This is a great psychedelic record. Um, some good fuzz guitar and stuff. It's, it's kind of your typical psych record, but it's very, very good. I do like it. It's on Janus Records, J-A-N-U-S, which is the same label that, like, Samandi is on and, like, some Candy Heat stuff's on. A great label. Really good stuff. Almost any time I see that label, I pick it up. This is Fleetwood Mac, uh, live in Chicago. Uh, this has got Otis Spann, Willie Dixon, uh, Shaky Horton, J.T. Brown, uh, S.P. Leary, so some some great musicians along with Peter Grant, Peter Grant, Peter Green, and uh, all the other Fleetwood Mac boys. Um, there's the inner gate folds like a map. So that's pretty cool. And I got this. I don't know if I've showed this before, but this is I had a copy. And it wasn't the greatest copy. It didn't have the greatest cover. But this is a really good copy with a really good cover. This is Bob Dylan and the band live in Charlotte, North Carolina, which is where I'm from. Uh, really cool to have. You don't see many bootlegs come out of Charlotte. So this is really cool to have. So I sold the other copy I had to another charlatan. And so I got this one. It's a really nice copy. Uh, man, I just love finding stuff like that. So... Then, so this is stuff that, like, I've gotten here recently um, that have been traded or whatever. So the other day I had a pop-up at the coffee shop, really laid-back type of deal. And um, wouldn't you know it, my buddy Hank some, from Smokestack Records comes in to my pop-up, which is cool because he's from Tennessee. So he's got a pop-up in Tennessee that he does um, every once in a while, and... We've become friends. Sorry. It's like 3 a.m. Uh, we've become friends, and uh, he drove all the way down to come to my pop-up. And I hope I hope it was good enough for you, Hank, uh, for the drive. Uh, but anyway, so he traded some stuff, and he brought me some stuff. He'd been holding a few things for me. Um, and uh, this is one of them. This is Houses of the Holy, which whatever you see them fairly fairly common record but this one's a little special here is side one your typical atlantic label what blank on side two pretty crazy um uh, i've looked some information up on it online um it was just kind of like a mispressed thing i guess and some of them have gone for good money. Some of them haven't. I don't know if it's worth. I don't really care because I'm probably going to just keep it. Uh, because I love weird Led Zeppelin stuff. And uh, I, I, in my research, you guys are going to kick out of this. I found out that in the record plus pressing plant, at some point in the you know 90s or something, when they were doing reissues of House of the Holy, uh, the same day they were doing, they were putting out um, Green Day Dookie. So, side one of House of the Holy is Dookie, Green Day. And then side two is side two of House of the Holy. So, imagine people surprised when they bought that record and that was Green Day. <laughs> but, that one. but those are really rare. Those are worth a lot of money when you find them. But there, they are, there's more than one of them. There's like a bunch. Um, and then I found another pressing that I guess the printing machine got messed up. And printed the sleeves backwards so it's like if you folded it in half that way so this was the outside and that was the inside so there are some like that I'd love to have one of those that'd, that'd be cool but anyways that's nerdy music stuff and then he traded in this Hampton Grease band uh, music to eat which um, I've not I actually never heard but um, I've done some research it's supposed to be a really good psych record um, I need to just take the time to sit down and listen to it uh, so many records are a little time, you know what I mean? Uh, and let's see. Uh, yeah. 
This will be a little out of sequence, but who cares? Um, another, this, this kid that comes out on my pop-ups, his name's Pete. He's awesome. He's like 19 and knows a ton about music, like more than I ever did at his age. Um, he's a big psych head and all this stuff, and he traded some things in. Uh, this is Jimi Hendrix Blues. I always wanted this and never, just never went to the trouble of going online and buying it. Uh, but it's supposed to be a really good compilation of Hendrix's blue stuff. Um, and really excited to get into it and, and listening to it. It's a beautiful gay fold cover. Uh, and then there's pictures all over the front of, you know, Muddy Waters, uh, Freddie King, uh, Lightning Hopkins, just B.B. King, Chuck Berry, Albert King, just a bunch of different dudes. Um... Uh, playing blues. Uh, he traded in this huge David Bowie set. It's a record store day. Uh, Welcome to the Blackout Live in London. It's 1978. Really thick. I think it's a 3 LP. A three LP. Um, really cool record store day type thing. Um, I'll probably be selling that because I don't that era of Bowie, I don't you know, I don't hate it but it's just not something I'm going to keep. I've got this place guys. I've got so many freaking records. It's, it's, it's ruining my life in the best way, but I've got to make some room and sell some stuff. So I'm about to have to make some hard decisions and sell some records that I don't really listen to. But see, then I look at it like, so if you sell every record that you don't listen to all the time, you know, you gotta, be, you gotta think about it like this. You know, sometimes people say, well, when was the last time you listened to that record? When was the last time you listened to that record? Go to somebody's house who has a big freaking library and say, when was the last time you read this book? Think about it. Anyways, but I do need to sell some records because I've got too many and um, I need to make room for better stuff. I'd rather sell 20 records that are just kind of okay that I don't listen to much and get one grail that I'm going to listen to all the time, like those Towns Fans ants. I'm going to wear them out. Anyways, uh, he also traded this in, Velvet Underground, Nico. This is a 1977 pressing. That sounds really good, he said, which I trust him. Uh, really super clean. I'll be selling this because I, I don't have any need for it at all. Um, he was at our local record store and got an unpeeled third state that's like, he said VG Plus for 50 bucks. I was like, what? So that's why he, he traded this in me. Which those, go look them up on eBay. They go for a heck of a lot more than that. Um, so Corey, uh, he doesn't have a YouTube channel, but he should. He's a great guy, a good friend of mine, lives nearby. Um, he brought some stuff to sell to me. He sold this to me last time, but I still want to show it. This is uh, "Do What Thou Wilt," which is the uh, is in the dead wax of the first pressing. So what's up on three uh, is is that, and this is a bootleg, a collection of Zeppelin studio outtakes, nineteen uh, seventy. So it's Zeppelin three stuff. So that makes sense with the title. Uh, that's kind of a cool bootleg. You won't really ever see that. It says there's 100 copies. This is number 60. From a plant flipping the bird there on the cover. Um, he sold that to me a while back, and I just now was showing it. And then he brought me this, which I had seen. I've seen this cover, the Royal Blood cover before, um, and I've never sought it out. I see so many album covers. I just don't have time. Uh, and he's like, you never heard this before? And I was like, no. And he's like, give this a spin. This is supposed to be Jimmy Page's favorite band right now. Um, or in the recent, whatever. And I put this bad boy on, and dude, it cooks. Uh, if you ever heard this and you like, I describe it as a mixture between Jack White and the Mars Volta, if you can imagine. Really good, high-energy rock and roll. It's a guitar player and a drummer. And man, this album right here, i just been playing it over and over again. It's like, it gets your blood pumping. I had my kids listening to it the other day. They were just jumping up and down, and then they just, like, took a great nap after that. It was awesome. So, highly recommended. Royal Blood. Um, and then, so this is their first album, I think. And then this is their second, I think. So this is How Did We Get So Dark. And I haven't listened to this yet. So, anyways. But that's kind of what I've been getting here lately, guys. Uh... I've gotten a bunch of stuff that's been traded in. I try not to keep everything. It's just a hard life, you know, when you have so many records and you're trying to figure out which ones you should keep and sell. So I know some of you guys can relate. Uh, I am kidding a little bit. 
but it really is hard. <laughs> it's hard to sell them, especially when you like them so much. Uh, that's the hardest part about selling is not is, is, is selling and not keeping them all. Uh, and then you get into like the different pressings and stuff, and it's just it gets crazy fast. But anyways, um, hope you guys enjoy this video. Kind of a kind of a short little so I can show you kind of what I've been getting into and all that stuff. But hope you guys are doing well. I think about you all the time. I'm trying to catch up on some. Uh, I'm off work this week because I'm sick, and so I just been trying to catch up on some VC videos way behind on uh i just barely get a chance to do anything nowadays i got i got so much going on i, I basically work two full-time jobs if you didn't know and uh just swamped all the time I sleep about three hours a night so anyways like i said it's 3 a.m now so i better get some sleep if i want to get better that's 3 30 but anyways hope you guys are doing good this has gone on long enough uh but thank you to hank for trading that stuff in good to see you man and uh I guess that's the only VC member I've bumped into. Oh, I mean, Chris Toons from the main camp. I see him all the time. We're good buddies. But um, anyways, I guess that's it. Talk to you guys soon.